All right, guys, now let's look at the next answer choices. We're actually going to group the alpha error and beta error together. We can sort of consider them in combination. So again, in order to consider these guys, we have to understand what they are. So let's just talk about that. I'm going to give you a nice mnemonic that I like. Okay, so what is an alpha error? And I actually have a nice little mnemonic for this one. Once we remember what alpha error is, beta error is easy. Beta error is just the other one. So let's first talk about what is alpha error. Okay, so alpha error is the error that most scientists make, right? Because an alpha error is like what an alpha scientist would do, the alpha male or alpha female scientist would do. So what an ambitious scientist wants to say is that there's a difference. You know, a scientist wants to say, okay, I looked at these two groups, and actually when we gave therapy A versus no therapy, or when I gave therapy A versus therapy B, there was a difference. The people that got therapy A did much better. So for an example, say there's a new type of insulin versus the old insulin, right? And a scientist is studying the difference in blood glucose control. And he or she finds, okay, when we gave the new insulin, blood glucose on average was way better. There's a significant difference between those that get the new insulin and those that get the old insulin. And of course, every scientist and every pharmaceutical company wants there to be a difference. So the alpha error is the error that's made the most often. The scientist is going to say, hey, there's a difference, but in reality, there's no difference. No difference. So again, this is the error that most scientists, they're actually biased to make this, right? Because every time they find a difference in their study, every time they get a positive result, they get more money, right? They get more grants, they get more attention, they publish more papers, and eventually they get tenure. So you can think of alpha error as the error that alpha scientists make. You know, alpha scientists. Or you can also think of it this way. This is also the error that the pharmaceutical industry likes, right? So pharma, big pharma, likes this kind of error, right? They want their scientists to say there's a difference because it means that they're going to sell their new drug more than the old one. Okay, very good. So what's beta error? Well, beta error is just the opposite. Beta error is saying there's no difference when really there's actually a difference. You know, my assumption is that the beta error is a lot less likely because there's so much incentive to make the alpha error. Okay, so now that we know what an alpha error is and a beta error is, let's think about the question. Now again, in either type of study, whether we do an RCT or a prospective cohort study, we have to come to a conclusion, and our conclusion is going to be that one group did better than the other, or they didn't. Same thing here, you know, there's... Same thing here, we have two groups, and we're going to say that either one group did better than the other or not. But is the likelihood that we make that error in the RCT going to be any different than making that error with the prospective cohort? No, it's not going to matter. In other words, the RCT is as vulnerable to an alpha error or a beta error as the prospective cohort study. Despite the design of the study, we're as likely to make an alpha error as we are to make a beta error in either one. So that means we can cross this guy out, as well as this one. Boom.